Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome again to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we look into important scientific ideas and see how they correspond to what Christianity has to say. Today, we're joined by Fuzz Rana, and we're going to ask the question, when did humans get the image of God? Fuzz, good to have you here again today. Jeff. So this is something that's kind of a bizarre thing that we could even talk about scientifically, because the image of God seems a very... Right spiritual, almost non-physical thing, but yet you're claiming that the fossil record has can actually weigh in on this. What, what, is, what about the fossil record gives us some input onto this question? Yeah, well, uh, the, the way you can, I think, measure when the image of God appears relates to the fact that the image of God is responsible for certain capacities that we have as mm. human beings. And those capacities are going to reflect in the archaeological record uh, and in turn, there's certain brain structures that I believe are needed to mediate the image of God. So what we can do is look in the archaeological record for evidence that indicates image of God behavior, and then also look in the fossil record for features in the, the skull of, you know, of humans mm -hmm. that would indicate a capacity for uh, the expression of that behavior. You know, that's that's a very interesting idea, and I, one that I find remarkably consistent with Scripture is that we're a spiritual and physical beings, and I know I tend to often think of, okay, there's a spiritual side and a physical side, but our spiritual and our physical have a lot of interplay there. And so that's yeah. really kind of what, we're, what you're getting at here, yes. is that because we're physical, that's going to have, or because we're spiritual, that has physical manifestations. So right. so what are, the, what are the specific things we're looking at that you address in the article? Yeah, well, uh, one big question is, when do modern humans appear? And for me, modern humans correspond to image bearers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're modern humans. And so when do modern humans appear? And uh, there was a study done where researchers were looking at hominin skulls and modern human skulls that were very well dated mm -hmm. and trying to determine when do unique anatomical features associated with the human skull appear. Our skull is actually really an unusual skull compared to that of Neanderthals or other hominins like, let's say, Homo erectus. So kind of give us just a couple of, really quickly, what they are. I mean, I don't want to explore that because I want to get into sure. what the data says here. The, the, the big thing is the globular shape. Okay. We have a globe-shaped skull, whereas other hominins have more an elongated skull. Mm, okay. And then we also have a, a flat face uh, we also have a, uh, a brow ridge that's not very pronounced, and we lack what's called an occipital bun. Mm -hmm. And those, those features show up in, in other hominins. And so the question then becomes, when does that suite of features appear um, in modern humans? And so what does the data tell us there? Well, it looks as if at, at about 135,000 years ago, we see evidence for a globular skull shape. In, and so this looks like this is the time where modern humans appear or where we would appear as, as human beings. And what's interesting is that this is also about the time where the archaeological record shows evidence for what's called symbolism, mm -hmm. which I believe is a really important marker for the image of God. And so then, th that's just the idea that we can think in terms of symbols and thoughts, what we're talking about, the words have meaning because they mean something, not just because they're a signaling or, a, you know, we're actually communicating things complex and symbolic with them. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. And then this is also where uh, the genetic evidence shows the time for mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosome Adam is about that window of time. And so what you see is this very interesting convergence of data that seems to indicate this is about when modern humans appear. So it's not just one single thing. So you've got genetic data, you've got archaeological and fossil evidence. Right. That seems a pretty powerful suite of evidence all pointing towards this. Yeah. So, so I kind of explore that. I mean, obviously, we're Christians think that this corresponds to what Christianity has to say. Um, yeah, you know, the idea that humans are symbolic and image bearers, that, that's not controversial. Putting it out at 100, 130,000 years ago, what do we do with that as Christians? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, I think it's important to realize that 130,000 years ago is relatively recent. Uh, you, some of the more traditional evolutionary models would have the origin of humanity going back uh, as far as 2 million years ago. So this is a relatively recent origin of humanity. And I believe that the, the Bible is actually silent as to when Adam and Eve were created. Now, people are tempted 
to use the genealogies to try to, to date when Adam and Eve were mm -hmm. created. But uh, if, if you read the best uh, biblical scholarship on the genealogies, they really are not meant to be read or interpreted in that way. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, they're theological constructs. They're not really meant to be timekeeping devices. So in effect, Scripture is silent as to when Adam and Eve were created, but uh, human beings were created as the last of God's creative acts. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are recent in the history of life on earth according to the fossil record, is compatible with what Scripture teaches. So let, let me just press on that. I'm curious how you'd answer. Could humanity be a million years old? Uh, I would find that hard mm -hmm. uh, to think that humanity could be a million years old. Uh, so so 100,000, that, that may, may push our comfort zone a little bit if we're used right. to thinking in terms of genealogies as timekeeping devices, but it really does point to a recent... right origin of, of humanity where this image of God would appear. And again, just kind of walk through again, what are the characteristics that we're seeing in the scientific data right. that seems to correspond and point to humans as image bearers? Yeah, well, I mean, the, 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 the evidence for symbolism would be uh, artifacts in the fossil record that reflect symbolic capabilities. And these would usually be certain types of markings that you would see on rocks or other mm -hmm. artifacts or cave art things like that that would reflect a symbolic capability. And again, this shows up about, you know, about 130,000 years or so mm -hmm. in the archaeological record. Now, the, the globular skull is significant because that allows for an expansion of what's called the parietal lobe, which is critical for the higher order brain processes that are needed to support language and mathematics and, mm -hmm. and, and the hand-eye coordination to make art or to make sophisticated advanced tools. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you're seeing this showing up at the, with the, in, uh, in combination with the archaeological evidence, the globular skull combined with the archaeological evidence is really gratifying. It looks like the data is converging. And, and well, and you throw in the genetic data, and that seems even more powerful. Right, yeah. So that this, to me, is a really good indication as to when modern humans appear, and it lines up with the biblical text. And, um, you know, what's also exciting is that uh, there was thought at one time among anthropologists that the modern human form showed up before the archaeological evidence mm. for symbolism. So you'd have anatomically modern humans showing up, you know, tens of thousands of years before behaviorally modern humans show up. Hmm. And that doesn't fit a biblical view, right. but it does fit an evolutionary view. But now what the data is showing is all of the data seems to show that the genetics, the anatomy, and the behavior uh, coincides with modern humans exactly in the way you would expect uh, from the biblical account. Well, thanks, Fuzz. I really do appreciate your comments. You know, when you look at what the Bible has to say, humans really are distinct among all the creatures that God has made here on the earth. And when we look at the creation, we see evidence that humans are indeed distinct, just the way the Bible describes. We'd encourage you to go to reasons.org and look for Fuzz's article on this. It's, When Did Modern Brains and the Image of God Appear? And that will equip you to be able to share this remarkable scientific data that points to the validity and accuracy of Scripture so that you can spread the gospel with confidence.